if I can be heard. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? I want I want to be sure you can hear me. You can hear me, right? So talk. You can hear me? All right. Okay, listen. I'm I'm going to try to make this quick. It's daytime so I can read and at night I have a problem seeing and the you know, to what I write here. All right. So you and your cousin you said or you know, Second cousin, you call her your niece. Decide to uh, decide to take the course, the one I found for you all, the Canadian Hospitality School. I paid um, for the dorm, like six thousand for both of you to sleep in a dorm. Then you told me, um, you told me that. You will update me about the school. And one time, um, I even joked and said, I hope you don't take that money and go shopping. I said that. You know, I said don't. And I was joking. <laughs> but I didn't realize that that's what you were doing. I was joking. I said, I hope you don't take that money and go shopping. And you said, oh, no, we're not that stupid. This is, um, this is for my, um, you know, for our education, for our future. That's what you told me. So I said, okay, that's good. You know. All right. So you told me the top five students will go to Thailand. Right? And you were number four in class. Angelica was number one. Right? So only five people going. So that sounds great. Right? Okay. Now, during that time, like, uh, for, for the for the class, you know, to graduate and so forth, you told me you need, like, uniform, uh, shoes, uh, I think a white, a white blouse or something like that, you know, a white blouse, shoes, so I said, fine, you know, because it's true, people who work in, um, what happened, she got, she got cut off. Wow. Hello? Hello? What happened? Hello. You got cut off. Yeah. Okay, let me let me try and move this fast so okay. you know. Okay. I just I just wanna go through some things that have been bothering me, right? All right, so I got you all. I sent money for uniform, for shoes, for pants, stuff like that. All right, fine. You know. Also, um, I think NBI, name because you had to, you know, you had to travel overseas. You need pictures for your passport, so forth. Fine. All that was taken care of. And then I figured that. Since you were going there, I think it was like for two months for the internship, you told me. And you have to work, but it's paid internship, so I know you were going to get paid, right? So, I sent $200, 100 for you, 100 for Angelica. So, that means um, you all have money to spend, right? I sent, so that's $200. Then... The day before you had to leave, I think you were supposed to leave after 6, you told me. You decide you're going to leave at night, you know, to go to one of the classmates' home to sleep over. And I was kind of wondering about that, right? Because during the, 
the time when I send you money for the school to pay in installments, I always said that um, don't carry a lot of money on the jeepney, you know, because you can get robbed. However, um, I got I got a notice from a text from Angelica saying that you all were robbed. You all were robbed, and I said, How? well, I don't believe that, and she said, yeah, we were robbed. You all were robbed of the $200 that I sent you all, right? And I find it hard to believe, and I asked, you know, is she that stupid? And then Joe goes, no, 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 she you know? And anyway, I said to you, when I did chat with you, I said, are you really that stupid? I told you, do not travel that amount of money. So that was $200, okay? That was $200 because you were going to be there for a whole month without any pay and, you know, until you get your pay. And then it would take you, you know, a while to get that your salary, what have you. Fine. So that's true. So, so that has nothing to do with the school. I mean, you already have money from the school. You could have stopped what you were doing, you know, and confessed. You didn't. So you took the $200. And then the next day, you told me that Angelica was crying a lot because you said that without, you know, without any money, you're not going to go to Thailand. So you said she's crying. And uh, you don't want, you know, you don't want you to be the reason that she's going to hate you in the future for making her mistake. And she asked for if I can send $50. And I agreed. I sent $50 by Western Union. <laughs> so that's $250 right there, right? Okay. Hello? Hello. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh. Let me shut this because this is interfering with it. All right. Um. All right. So now, now you're in Thailand, right? Then uh, let's see. All right. So while there, you told me something about your your mother. I had a some kind of, was given an offer, like fifty percent off in the rent. And, um, you know, because the landlord's son was in jail or something like that and needed uh, bail. And if I could give you an advance. And I said, no, i already given you enough money. I'm not going to get involved with that. And you keep, like, begging me, you know. 50% off, you will advance me. So that, that, that definitely was a scam because you, you were not there. But I'm just pointing out these are the things that you did, you know. You asked me because you said 50% off your mother will get for, for rent. If she were to pay like, you know, maybe like six months in advance. And um, that would be, which sounds like a good deal. It's true. You know, if you get 50% off your rent and you could pay six months in advance to get somebody out of jail for bail. You know, then that, that'd be great. You know, so that did sound good. But I said, no, I'm not going to get involved with that. I said, I already helped you all a lot already. <clears throat> and I don't want to be involved. Right? You told me that a van comes and pick you all up. Right? That's what you said. And, you know, you just back and forth. You don't get to see anything. This was in Bangkok. You said Bangkok is a clean city. <laughs> I thought that's strange because I've been to Bangkok a few times. And to me, it's like a dirty city, you know? I mean, even one of my friends there said she doesn't like Bangkok. And she's from Thailand. And she said, Bangkok is too dirty. But anyway, so you said that you haven't seen anything. You haven't traveled. And I said, I'm going to ask one of my friends, you know, in Bangkok, one of my Thai friends, to come meet you, to take you out. And you said, okay, fine, you know, no objection. And then I did contact one of them, you know, one of them, uh, 
I left the lady and she went back to her hometown, but I found another one. And she said, yeah, she'd be happy to take you out. I said, yeah, this is my friend from um, the Philippines. And she's working at a five-star hotel in Bangkok. But she hasn't been around, and I need somebody to take, take her out. She agreed. So I told her, and she said she would meet you. And then not long after that, you told me that uh, the school had a problem with the hotel, and you all have to leave immediately. <laughs> and you have to go back to the Philippines, you know. So, when you when you said that, was that because I said my friend is gonna come meet you? Is that why you said that? You had to go back to the Philippines. Hmm. You hear what I said? Can you hear me? Yeah, like rather static there. You hear what I said? When you told when you told me you all had to go back to the Philippines after I said she's gonna come meet you. Huh? She she was really gonna come meet you all, but you told me um that the school had a problem with the hotel and they're gonna get one in maybe in um Singapore or something like that. You know? Anyway, we know that's not true, but I'm just saying it's record that that's what you said to me, right? Okay, so let's let's move on. You said you met some Filipinos there, and they told you you asked about working in at the hotel, and they said there are no jobs, you know. However, when you get back. Hello? Hello? You keep getting cut off. Okay, so I'm trying to go through this as fast as I could. You know, speed this up. So they tell you, try the cruise, cruise ship lines. Which sounds like a good idea, right? Okay. Um... And I, I believe you said that you contacted uh, some agencies and they told you, like, because it was like toward the end of the year now, you know, this was 2016 we're talking about, right? So then it was like getting a little before Christmas and I said to you, well, you know what, um, since you'll be going away more than likely because you said you had to wash, you know, do your laundry and so forth. And I asked you, well, you know, it's like a place you go to, a laundromat. You said, no, you got to wash by hand. So I was thinking in advance, and I was saying, well, you know, if she goes on a cruise, you know, working on a cruise ship, her mother is going to have to take care of her kids, and her mother is going to be having to wash by hand. So I said, that's that's not good. So I decided, with you didn't ask me, I decided, because I was looking out for you, I decided I'm going to get you a washing machine. And we checked online. I think it was uh, Abinson or something like that. This is in Walter Matt in Kamona. Right? And uh, you found like a, a washer dryer combination. And you say, are you, are you for real? And I say, yeah, I'm for real. You know, because I figured, why not? You know, you you went to school, you took your course, you did well, you went to Thailand, you know, you came back. I get you the machine because that wouldn't be right having your mother having to wash by hand at her age, you know. So I was looking out for you. No strings attached. Got you the machine. You got the machine delivered and so forth. You were very happy. You said your mother even cried when she saw the machine right okay so that was in the wall in the Walter Walter mat you got the machine right okay let's move on um, you said you found yeah you found an agency you want mm, then there was like a placement fee placement fee was one year salary something like fifty thousand and it's like 15% interest. You said you didn't want to do it. And I said, what, are you crazy? You know, I said, 
you could borrow from the bank. The bank will, you know, provide the loan, which is good. That's the way they usually do things. You know, then you just then I urge you to sign up and get it. You agreed, right? However, I I paid for the MBI clearance and medical exam and so forth that you said you and Angelica needed, right? You said that the agency uh, first. You, you said the agency first text Angelica and said to come in with her things, you know, to the agency to stay there. And then, like, half hour went by, you you were getting nervous because you figured, wow, you didn't get any call. Then they text you. You were nervous. Then they finally text you. They told you to come in, too. Bring your things in. And you will stay there. All right? And they called in, like, ten ladies... They call in 10 ladies, right? And you all had to stay there. I thought it, that was kind of odd. And I said, well, why would they want you there? And you said, well, they want to check to make sure that nobody nobody is pregnant to go out, you know, working. Otherwise, that's going to create a problem. So that to me sounds kind of kind of reasonable. You know, you don't want to, like, send somebody in to work on a cruise ship. And then it turns out they're pregnant. You know that's not go- that's not going to be good for the company, for the agency. Even though I think it was kind of ridiculous to do that, right? So okay, so um, so I so I told you, look, you know, you're going to be going away. You need to see your kids, right? You can't be locked up in a place over there. You know, check in to see if you're pregnant. And I even joke with you and tell them to let you go. I said, let you go back home to your kid. And I said to you, and I joke, saying that the only, tell them the only man who can get you pregnant is far away from you. So that's not going to happen. You know, that was a joke, of course. But I had no idea. Um, so let's see. So what I did, it was near Easter. And I said, being that you're leaving, I'm going to send you some money, you know, for your kids. Because you can buy, you know, I call it like the Last Supper with Jesus Christ right around Easter, Good Friday. Having that Last Supper with your kids. You eat for Easter. You take them out, which I did. And you were very thankful, you know. Okay. But I didn't realize that it was like a betrayal, you know, like in the Last Supper, you had Judah sitting there at the dinner table with Jesus and his disciples. So this is what happened. All right. Then you told me you saw a suitcase. I forgot the name of the suitcase, but it's one of those that was advertised and was like 45% off. And I checked, which was true. <laughs> The suitcase was listed. It was on sale. Everything was fine, you know. And I send you, I send you the money to buy the suitcase. Also, a hundred and fifty dollars for spending money when you get on the ship. I even said change the money, a hundred dollars into euro and keep fifty dollars, you know, to buy. I think you wanted makeup or something like that. All right. So. So, so you took a hundred dollars. You said you will change into euros, right? April seventeen. You said what's the date to go to Brussels, Belgium? All right. So this is one of, one of the things I did check on. I I never checked in the school because the reason is I was the one who who um you know found the school. I was the one who wrote the school and told you this is the school I want you enroll in. And I'm going to be the one who will make the installment payments. So, however, I asked you for the name of the ship. And for some reason, when you wrote me saying you're on the ship, you didn't tell me. And I said, well, what's the matter with you? I asked you again, the name of the ship. And you told me. But anyway, because the only way I can find out whether it's true or not is to check that ship. And you told me. The name of the ship is, uh, n- let's see, she cut off again, let me wait, alright, okay, I don't know why you keep cutting off like that, so it's definitely, maybe your end, because I thought it was my phone the last time, alright, so, 
you you told me the ship name is the National Geographic uh, Orion. The the company is Lindblad, right? So I I guess you did your work well because I checked, and you said and the ship was in Brussels. Yeah, that's true. So you really convinced me, you know, because that's the one time I did check to see if you're bullshitting or not, and uh, it shows the ship is in Brussels, and then after that. I checked the itinerary and it shows it will go around Europe, you know, like all over Europe, all these different countries. So I was happy to see that and I told people, wow, my friend would be like going all over Europe, you know, countries, even me, i never been to. I mean, I've been to Europe, some countries in Europe, but all these different con countries, I said, wow, that'd be a great experience for you all, for you girls, I said, you know, to be going to all these places, right? All right. So fast forward, let me try and get through this fast. Um, I heard from you. You told me um, you wanted twenty dollars for you know me to send to your mother because I think Zay needed some kind of antibiotic at the time. The one you one for it didn't work. Remember you told me you were pawing your phone to a girl. Because you were asking me for more money, and I, I refused. I said, no, I'm tired of sending <laughs> I'm tired of sending you new money. And then you claim you're pawing your phone. So you said, you had no phone. So on the ship, there was a nice lady from Mindanao. That's what you told me. There's a lady from Mindanao. She has a phone, and you have to use a phone. Because the ship has Wi-Fi, you know, that you can use. Free Wi-Fi when in port. All right. So the twenty dollars I sent, no problem. I send that to your mother, right? Then I didn't hear from you again. Then when I did hear from you, you wanted like a hundred dollars for me to send to your mother to buy like school uniform for your kid. You claim you didn't get paid as yet. I thought that was kind of outrageous for the Philippines because I've been in the Philippines and you know, I mean, there's a lot of poverty there, and there's no way any parent is going to be spending like a hundred dollars to buy um, uniform for kids. You know, that's just completely outrageous. So, however, I did send I did send fifty dollars. All right, to make you happy, I sent fifty dollars. Right. All right. Now, moving forward, you told me Angelica used to be bothered. British man bothering Angelica. You know, he wants her to be his girlfriend, things like that. She refused. Another man, another man said he'll be, he will provide for her. And she said, no, you know, that's why I have a job. That's uh, I don't need a, a man. I have a job, you know. I'm looking to what my future, which is good, you know, because it's true. If you're on a ship or you're a young woman, men are going to try to come after you, you know. And the last thing you need is to get pregnant and be kicked off the ship. So that sounds convincing to me, right? So, okay, that was around May 2017, right? Now, during the interim, I uh, decided to take a trip. It was called an Indochina tour. Going to Thailand, Laos, Vietnam, Cambodia, four countries, then back to, back to um, Thailand. I left sometime in early sep September, probably around the 1st, you know. Alright, so I heard from somebody claiming to be a mother around September 7th. I was in a place called um, Luan Prabang in Laos, right? Okay, and while there, she told me she hadn't heard from you in... In three months, she hadn't got any money or anything like that. And I said, well, you know, I'm traveling. I don't know. I'm, I told her where I am in Laos and so forth. And she was telling me, I think it would be um, uh, Caleb's birthday was coming up, she told me. And they had no money from you. And, you know, I went back and forth with her. But let me just back up a little before that. Um... While you claim to be in the in the dorm, you claim that Angelica's sister was sick with de with dengue, and she was in the hospital. Did that really happen? Was she really sick? Dengue fever. Was she really sick? 
I know you hear me. But you really sick with dengue fever? Alright, but this is this is what was told to me. Uh she had dengue fever and uh she was in the hospital for that. Then she got out, she was discharged. Not, not long after that she got what you call uh you said GBS. GBS, right? Alright. And she was in the in the ICU. Is that true? Huh? You hear me? GBS. GB GBS is um it's Guillain Barre syndrome, whereby the body becomes paralyzed. Um, it's kind of like it's one of those illnesses you don't really hear about, which is very very rare. So I said to myself at that point, you know, why God? You asked me to help these girls. And it's like they have problems one after the other. First, her, first, uh, her cousin's youngest daughter is sick with dengue fever, and now she has uh, Guillain-Barré syndrome, which is a, a paralysis of the body, and they paralyze her body, you know, the nerves and so forth, and then you can you can't move around. And she was in the ICU, which is true because if if you have an um. An illness like that, you do end up in ICU. It's terrible, you know. You can't move your body, you can't move your hand, you can't move your feet, you know. So, however, I'm asking you, did was she ever sick like that? You're not, you're not answering. Was your cousin's daughter ever sick with dengue fever and Guillain-Barré syndrome? Is, was that true? Sorry. Your cousin. Was your cousin ever sick with Guillain-Barre syndrome? Then she died. You said she died. She was only 15 years old. You said she was 15 years old when she died. Was that true? Was that a true story? My cousin. Yeah, your cousin's daughter. Remember? The, she's 15 years old. Angelica's sister. 15 years old and she had GBS, guillain barre syndrome. Did she die? Huh? Yeah. So that was really true, right? She really died, right? And she had and she had dengue fever before, right? All right. So anyway, um, so that time I was chat with your mother, right? I told her I didn't hear from you. We had this discussion about agency and so forth, you know. So, um, then I heard from her again, and she told me that, she told me that, that Caleb had, um, leukemia, and he was in the, was in the hospital. I think it was like 28,000 pesos for the hospital admission. What, was that ever true? That he had leukemia? Caleb. Now we know that you say you were pretending to be the mother, but did your son really have leukemia or was that just something you made up? Sorry? Did your son ever really had leukemia? Leukemia? Not, le not leukemia. Just had a problem on the blood. Yeah, he said the blood cell, the blood cell went high. Cancer treatment. He was getting um, chemotherapy and so forth. You know, all that stuff. That's leukemia. I mean, I mean, his problem blood, with the blood, huh? His blood, his, his blood white, his blood white cell is more than the red blood cell. Yeah, well, you know, uh, leukemia is where the, the, okay, so, well, leukemia is my word, to be fair, not, not your word, but she said that, you know, he was hospitalized and for cancer, she said he had cancer, that's what she told me, right, when I chat with her, and now you claim that was you, you know. But she said he had cancer. She didn't. She didn't say that uh, he had leukemia because I know that's what leukemia is. When you have more white blood cells than red blood cells, 
But she said he had he cancer. He was hospitalized with hyperkemia. Yeah, you, but I got the message that he um he had um he had cancer and he was hospitalized and it was like twenty eight thousand pesos something like that for the treatment, you know. But you saying he was in the hospital? You saying that's true, right? Not cancer. Huh? But get sick, but not cancer. Okay, but the the records show because remember Skype, Skype has like a history, and I have my laptop, and it shows where it says cancer. Where, when uh, the mo mother was was chatting with me, said that he has cancer. That's what I that's what I read. So when it said cancer, I figure I use the word leukemia because that's what it is. Cancer, of the white blood cells, is called leukemia. All right. So so now I right here. I said. This is what I read. By this time, I was fed up of you, right? I told you, um, con contact the agency to move more money out of your out of your account to your mother's account because I believe it was you to uh, to your mother's debit account because your mother supposedly had a debit card. According to your mother, Zane came close to death because he did not have an asthma pump. Then I never heard from you again, nor your mother. So, does Zane suffer from asthma? Is that true? Zane has a problem with asthma? Sorry? Zane. Does Zane have a problem with asthma? Zane. Is he asthmatic? Zane. Yeah, Zane. Was hit by the tricycle? Yeah, no, no, I'm not talking about the tricycle. The tricycle was when... Yeah, but yeah. does he have a problem with asthma? Like he needs a, an asthma pump to breed? Yeah. He has a problem with asthma? Because you said that um, he needed... He needed... Yeah, but that this time he went Kamona. When when I had this conversation, you know, it was Kamona, and you were saying that you nearly, you nearly, we nearly lost him, you said. We not we nearly lost them, right? Okay. Um. So, yeah, huh? Yeah, you said to me in the conversation that time. This was December of December of um 2017 when I was having this conversation, right? And you said we not we nearly lost Zane, you know. We thought it was this bad. That's what you said. And uh, you needed the nebulizer, and you had to go because you didn't have a nebulizer. You had to go to the hospital. That's the only way you can get treatment. You see, by taking him to the hospital. You see, because you you don't have money for the nebulizer pump at home, right? So now. When I spoke, when I chat with you sometime early, you said that was that wasn't really your mother. You said that was you. That was you pretending. So, in that question, yeah. December, December, yeah, this yeah, December of uh, December of 2017, I did send some money. I think it was around the last day of the year. I sent like fifty dollars because. The message to me was that there's no money, you know, we have we had nothing like for three months, didn't get any money, the boys are hungry, and it's a new year coming. So uh, what do you expect me to do? You know? Here here I am, I'm I'm traveling, right? I'm having a good time traveling in, in Asia, seeing all these different countries, and I'm hearing my very good friend her two boys are hungry with nothing to eat. What am I going to do? I'll be like, uh, I would have to be like a low life to say, you know, I'm not going to help these people. No, I, I couldn't do that. So what I did, I used my laptop. I had my laptop with me and I sent $50 to your mother so she can buy some food and so forth. So she could ring in the new year, you know, with some food because as a human being, I couldn't see it that I'm, I'm there traveling around the world. And to know you, you know, your boys are hungry and they couldn't eat anything. However, it's only later on, right? I think a few days ago I found out that that was really you. And you were, 
you would ask me, pretending to be your mother, if I'm coming to the Philippines, right? And I said, no, the Philippines is not on the list. It's not part of Indochina, you know? Indochina, those, those countries that I mentioned. Um, so, no, I'm not going to the Philippines. Now, I had no idea that was you. Because what happened after the tour, the tour ended like around, I think, the 29th of December. We went back to Thailand. And then um, I had time like to leave to leave Thailand like uh, the 7th of January, right? So, but however, when you chat with me, I was in Laos. So that was around the 7th of September. So if I knew you were in the Philippines, instead of like going back to Thailand, you know, and get a hotel, I could have gone to the Philippines. I could have easily like... Uh, even if you had said, you know what, I'm sorry, um, it's me, I'm in, the, I'm in the Philippines, I'm not in the ship, yeah, I would have been pissed off at you, I would have been angry, but I would have still gone and visited you, you know, because I'm right there, Thailand is not that far, I mean, it's a few hours away by plane, <laughs> but I would have still, you know, I would turn around and still staying in Thailand, I would have said, let me get a ticket, and I'm going, you know, to Manila, and I would have met up with you and see you. Yeah, I probably would have been angry. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. I probably would be pissed off. But, yeah, I would have been in the Philippines. I won't be pissed off enough that I want to kill you. You know, I would say, you know, I would have been able to sit down with you and say, you know, what you did is wrong. You know, but you never gave me that opportunity. You just left it like that. You see? So, so you, you never told me anything like that. So then this, this past uh, uh, September, I decided to visit the Philippines, right? I wrote you. Um, I, n I never told any of my friends. I was hoping at least you read what I wrote. <laughs> you know, and contact me. I brought some, like, foodstuffs and so forth. Huh? Can you, can you, hold, your, can you hold your microphone, please? So I could understand you uh, like this. Are you like this? Can you hear me now? Yeah. All right. So I brought some food stuff and so forth, right? For you, for your kids. Well, I was expecting, if I didn't hear from you, maybe I'll hear from your mom. So you were kids. So eventually, um, I didn't hear from you. So I, I gave your stuff away to one of the neighbors, Lynn. She lives downstairs. Because I seen her in the cam. I figured, well, I don't hear from you. I don't know. But still, I was hoping maybe while there, because I asked Lynn. And I said, maybe, you know, maybe we can go down to Cavit to Cavite, you know, and find out and search for Lynn where she lives. But I don't think Lynn was really interested in, in going down, in, <laughs> you know, in helping me go down there. There is a place, however, she did mention... That it's like a, a tourist site, I think, with a mountain, which is not that far from you. Uh, she did mention that, that area down there, you know. She said maybe, maybe we can go there, but she never really mentioned in your area, you see. So then, to speed things up, I decided, look, this is crazy. I haven't heard from you in over a year. I don't know what the hell is going on. Um, so then I decided, since she let me use her Facebook, I decided, let me go check out, because I had got a new phone, right? Um, a Huawei phone, and it has these apps, and I saw the Facebook app. And I said, oh, let me, um, let me, uh, sign up for the Messenger, you know, because I don't use the, pl the Facebook on, on my, um, laptop. And then I had to see a Joyce Laconda, right? And I said, oh, wow, Joyce. And I and I I checked it out and I saw somebody that looks like you and I said, Wow, this is kinda too real. <laughs> it's like so real, you know. Same name, same Kamona, Karate. So and then I send a message. I send a message and I said, Wow, I have a friend that looks like you, you know, maybe it's not you. Because on the phone on the on the phone, these phones, it's very small, you know, it's really hard to see the features. And then I didn't get any, 
I didn't get any response from you. So, okay. So, I used Lynn's uh, Facebook and I checked. And I went on there. And then I checked. And I saw your pictures. And still, I said, no. I was like in disbelief. But what what confirmed it was because you were standing there. There was like a, a birthday party. There was a sign that said, welcome home to. And there was, in the birthday party, I saw your son's name, Zane. It said up there, Z-A-N-E. So I said, yeah. That is about, now I'm like 99% sure. That's how. Because, I mean... How could two people, you know, different people have the same name of the son living in the same place? No, that's just too much for coincidence, you see. So, I went on, I checked, and I told her, look, I want you I want you to get in touch with Joyce. And she said, what do you want me to say to her? <laughs> I said, well, tell her, and I said, mention my name that I was looking for, you know. I need to talk to her, because she knows about you, you see, but, um, what you did, instead of, like, instead of responding to her, you decided to block her, right, and then, okay, because she, and I got mad at her, because I said, why did you have to tell her you are her friend, she started out by saying, she told me, I said, uh, when you asked, who is this? And she said, this is your friend, you know? And I said, no, you're wrong. Because I think she did that one time too, when I asked her to call your mother, to speak to your mother. And she, she, um, she got, she said something about this is a friend, and she started asking for you, and you know, this is a friend of Joyce, uh, and I said, no, 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 that's wrong. I said, I didn't, I didn't ask you to do that. I didn't give you that liberty. All I wanted to do was contact her, give her a message for me, and that's it. But she takes the liberty to go beyond that. So here she was again, you know. It's like she, she didn't learn from her lesson. You see? She, she didn't learn from her lesson. Now, now, now um, in, in, instead, instead of um, going in there and say, look, you know. This is uh, this is what I'm looking for. Uh, oh, this is the message. No, she didn't do that. Instead, she decided she's gonna she's gonna tell a story. You see, <laughs> so I kind of got pissed off because it's like, why can't you just go in there and and tell her my name? I'm looking for you. You know, why you gotta make up a story like that? So okay. Finally, um, she tried a second account. I didn't even know she had another account, right? And um, you blocked her too. She said you blocked her. I said, "Wow, she blocked you again." Okay, but see, she got she knows a lot of people. So I said, "Wow, she can't block everybody in the Philippines <laughs> that try to kick." that tried to contact her. I mean, you can only block so many people, then you go crazy after a while. So, so she got to respond to somebody, you know. Then she has a friend who works in, uh, in Kuwait. Uh, she asked her, because I chatted with her friend before, you know. I think I, I have it on the messenger, um, named Josephine. And she left you a message, you see. But Josephine took a different approach than Lynn. And you didn't respond to Josephine. Josephine told me that she left you a message. She waiting for your response. And I asked, did she block you? But she didn't say whether you, you she blocked you, you blocked her or not. And then uh, you said, okay, fine. You know. So um, sh so she told me, well, if she, if I don't hear from her, she's gonna give a certain time. If I don't hear from her. I'm going to contact like her friends, you see, so there's another way <laughs> around, so Josephine was smart, she decided, well, if you're going to block me, there's another way I can get to you, which is the worst way, by the way, you know, which is through your friends, so I think the mistake you made was when you blocked Lynn, you should have just dealt with her, you know, you could have just faced it and say, look, you know, yeah, you know, I'm sorry, you know, this guy is a friend or what have you, or so forth. 
I just deal with her. And if you are dealt with her, then I would have taken it from there because I wouldn't let her get her friends involved. See, that's one thing about me. Because remember, I was trying to protect you. I was very protective of you. Or, you know, all the things they say about you, whether you were a scammer or what have you, as much as Lynn and her sister-in-law Vicky disagree or maybe don't like each other, I don't know. One thing they do agree upon, they agree, they agree from way back. They said that they don't trust you, they don't believe you, you know, and they were looking out on my behalf. And I never really took their advice because I didn't want to believe that. I believe I was trying to help you. There wasn't any really ulterior motive, you know, or as they say, like a quid pro quo, like I give you something, you give me something. No, it wasn't like that, you see. So I figure... I'm not going to listen to them, but, you know, they, they were right. They were right. They, um, they never believe you. They, they said she could be a scammer or so, so forth. So I wish you had dealt with, with Lynn and say, yeah, you know what, and answer her, but you didn't. You decided to block her. Then she came with another account. You block her again. Josephine contact you. I don't know whether you blocked Josephine, but you didn't. You had another chance. <laughs> you had a third chance, right? Like in baseball, they say, you have three strikes, then you're out. You had three strikes. When Josephine got in contact with you, you should have answered Josephine, you know? And that might have ended because once you get in contact with Josephine, Josephine would have contacted me, and then I would have taken it from there and just thanked her. But because you didn't do that... <laughs> Josephine decides she's going to go out, you know, it's like waging a war, you see, like a psychological war. So now she's going to contact all these different people she sees contacting you or what have you, which makes it even worse, you see. So I'm just telling you, you are fighting the wrong war, fighting the wrong way, because you end up hurting yourself more by not dealing with me, you see. By, by saying, oh, you know, I'm going to block this one or block that one or block this one and so forth. Right. So th those, are the, those are the issues I want to discuss with you and I want to get that out. Right. And now, the thing about Angelica, right. Now, you said that you use the money, you use the money to, um, I don't know, help your family, what have you. Okay, that's to me that's stupid. When when you told me that you you know when you wanted to go to the call, I helped you go there. Then you said, uh, um, your cousin who died has a twenty one year old daughter. The only job she can find is like selling fruits. She earns like three three thousand pesos a month, out in the province, and um. She's taking care of seven kids. You said she's taking care of seven kids. Was that a true story? That she, she takes care of seven, seven of her aunt's kids? Is that true? Hmm? Five kids. Oh, five kids. But you so, told me seven. Okay. Yeah, you told me seven. But you said it's five now, right? All right. So what do you expect me to do? I mean, you know, here you are. You're telling me about a young girl, 21 years old, graduated from high school. Only job she can find is selling fruits, three thousand a month. That's that's like sixty U.S. dollars a month. You know, and all she needs is a bus ticket to go back with you and maybe change her life forever. So I wasn't going to say no, but at the same time, I wanted to check it out. And, and I said, well, you know, put it, put her on. Let, let me chat with her, right? Unfortunately, I didn't say um, get, on, get on the cam so I could see and confirm. But I just went along with what you say. And uh, I chat with this person. You say it's Angelica. I asked her her name. She told me her name. And she said, yeah, you know, when I get there, I will work hard. And I said, okay, I'm going to send you some money for the bus fare and also that you could travel around, you know, to look for a job when you get there, right? So I sent I sent $60 to you. 
to do that uh, to Western Union, and you get the money so you can get on the bus, <laughs> and um, you know you can bring her with you. So then, in the interim, I figure, look, yeah, you, know, you said yeah, uh, I think it was um, one of, one of the pharmacies near you, one of the drugstore, Mercury Drug. They had a job advertised. They had a job advertised, but the person has to be like 25 years and younger. And you said, well, she's smart. She can, you know, she could probably do this job. And you all went there for an interview. And um, so what I did, I figured, look, you know, since I was the one who was responsible for bringing her up there, it's not going to be easy to find a job because I read statistics in the Philippines about 50% of people who graduate from high school, the only job they really can do is like selling fruits. That's nothing. You can never have a farm. You can never rent an apartment. You can never do anything constructive if you're only selling fruits, if that's your only job and you're living in poverty. So I thought this is the best opportunity. I'm going to help these girls because... If I don't, chances are it's gonna get worse. They're gonna, you know, be contacting me, asking me to help them to buy rice or buy something like that, and it's gonna be on and on. So you know, it's like the old saying, you know, that uh, it's best to teach somebody how to fish than to feed them, right? Because once somebody learns how to fish, they can go fishing, they can catch their own fish, and they can feed themselves. And that was the whole idea. And I found this school, the, Can the Canadian uh, Hospitality School in Manda Yulon City. And I contacted them. They told me the course, uh, the, you know, like uh, the food and beverage, the front desk operation. There's also one for uh, maid cleaning and so forth. And my mother worked in... Uh, in a, in a hotel, you know, cleaning rooms. That's a hard job. So I didn't even consider that. I figure you all can do either food service or, if not food service, the front desk operation. Because I, I spoke to you over the years, so I could tell you I have a degree of intelligence. You're not a stupid person, you know. <laughs> I mean, there are people, you know, you speak to, you could tell they're not, they don't really have it all together up there. But that... You never came across that way. You never came across as somebody who's like, wow, you know, she's like clueless. I mean, you can have, I can hold a conversation with you about different topics. So that's good. That's good. You have a good thing going for you there. You know, you come across as intelligent. So I figured, why not? You could take one of the courses. You could probably work in a hotel or work in a restaurant, work in a cruise ship. So that's why I decided I'm going to call and get, you know, get you all into the school and pay for it, and so forth. Now, this whole idea with Angelica, I never heard from Ange Angelica, never heard any notes from her, even though you claim she was being bothered, and so forth. So, you're saying that you brought her with you, but I'm suspect that this, that this isn't really true. This is really a fantasy. This is something you just made up again, right? That's, that this never really happened. Remember you sent me a picture? That you said uh, this is Angelica. You sitting there. You all you all drinking something. You remember that? Remember remember you sent me that picture. You remember you sent me a picture with you sitting and she sitting a girl in green and you sitting there and both of you. I have the picture somewhere. And um. You said that's Angelica. Was that really Angelica? Or is that somebody else? The girl in the picture. You know, you know the picture I'm talking about, right? Sorry. I say you know the you know you know the picture that I'm talking about, right? The picture of the girl. The dog? The girl. The girl that you said is Angelica. The, the picture. I don't have it on my phone because I had to wipe my phone clean. Otherwise, I will show it to you. 
the the picture of the girl in um she's wearing I think she's wearing a green top or something and you said this is Angelica was that girl really Angelica no huh so who was that girl my friend oh so that girl was your friend not Angelica so so Angel so Angelica did she ever leave uh Naga City did she ever come up with you No, so that so that was all. So all this talking, this person used to call me uncle and so forth. You know, used to always call me uncle. How are you, uncle? And tell me, uh, uncle, Ate Joyce is uh, Ate Joyce is pretty. You know, that was you, right? Tell me that Ate Joyce is pretty. Yeah. So you, so you, um. <laughs> Let me just let me just say, you know, I mean, you you're like what they call the the great imposter. I gotta hand it to you because um, you you were playing the role of three different people, you know. I mean, you should you should be an actress because you you're very good, you're very skillful. Because yeah, you 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 said a lot of things and you were very nuanced that you had me believing a lot of stuff, you know. Because I figure, yeah, Angelica, she wants to, and I think that, to me, I thought I was doing a good thing because Naga City, you know, if somebody wants to leave their, leave for a better life and move to the big city and get an opportunity, you know, that'd be great. So, so this was all made up. Angelica, is that even her name, Angelica, or you just made that up? Huh? That's not even a name, right? Your cousin, your, your, that's her real name, Angelica? Yeah? So did you, did, did you, did you ever, did you ever tell her that you, you use her name on the false pretenses? Did you ever say, look, I use your name to get money? To travel from Naga City, you know, back to uh, Metro Manila. You ever told her that? That there's a man thinking he's sending you, you know, to, to a course to better your life. And I'm using this and I'm just taking money in the false pretenses and so forth. All this time you claim you're on the ship. You got a headache. You, you, you know, you could barely walk. You know, your legs giving out and so forth because um you know and i'm thinking wow you girls are on the ship working you know and i'm really proud of you all because i'm saying you know i'm making a difference because you know i see i seen poverty in the philippines and i know what it is like and you had two boys and i know you love your boys and you want the best for them and i try to give you that opportunity even though i never met you and i never asked you for anything but you know the cost is on, was only like four hundred dollars. If you think it's like an investment for a better life, you know. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so really disappointed. At first, I felt hurt because I, I hurt was because I figure, oh, now she, you know, she got an opportunity. And she's living the life. She experienced things. She went out. She seen Europe. She went to Antarctica. She went to places that even me will never go. So she forget about me, <laughs> you know. So that really hurt me. That's the truth. I'm gonna admit that. But then, when when I found out that you know you never did any of that, you know, then I I didn't really feel hurt. I felt disappointed because I'm saying, well, why did she why did she throw away an opportunity to get out of poverty? Because the Philippines is not an easy country, you, you know. If you don't have opportunity. And many times, people will die in the Philippines. They grow old, and they never have an opportunity, and they never be able to do what they want to do. You know, because they never had that opportunity. But there, I was giving you an opportunity, and and you know what made me even more sad and disappointed was that when you told me you worked in, in, uh, in Bahrain in the Middle East, you know? I feel like I wanted to cry because it's like, oh my God, 
I tried to help this girl so she can, you know, work in food, food and beverage. She can work in a ship. She can work in a hotel. I was in Arcata and the resorts. There's so many, so many jobs over there, you know, like people can work there in those uh, resort areas near SM Mall of Asia, those big resorts. People spend like maybe two, three thousand dollars a night. Imagine that. In a, in a hotel room, yeah, <laughs> I checked that, you know, and so you could have been working there. You didn't have to leave, leave the Philippines and go work on a ship if you want to be around your kids, you know. But at least you have a job and you have opportunity because you were the one who told me. You said, you know, once you reach like thirty years old, you know, it's very hard to get a job, and it's true. Because I helped you get that job in the factory where you were doing like quality control. And I send you the money for your medical, and you used to be, you know, you paid for bed space and so forth. And then they came, they closed that down, and then uh, for a while, then they opened it back up, then they closed it. And I don't know, you came online, you were asking me money, you know, to buy rice, and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with her? She has a job, I, I send her money for medical, you know, for the NBI, all that stuff. You know, because the Philippines is very, very difficult. Not like America. In America, if I if I want to look for a job in America, I have my social security card, right? And I have my uh, like my driver's license, you know, and I could go look for a job. And and that's it. That's all you need in America. Whereas in the Philippines, you need like NBI certificate, maybe barangay, maybe police clearance, and then usually they want a medical, you know? Here in the United States, no, that's not how it is. <laughs> in the United States, if you want if you want a job, it's very rare that an employer gonna say you need a medical. Like okay, like in the health field that I work, yeah, they usually have and the reason they have medical is because uh, they wanna make sure that you are vaccinated, you know? You have vaccines you know, like the MMR, measles, mumps, rubella, so that, um, you know, you, know you, you don't pass it on to patients. So that's that's the one reason why. But like regular jobs like that, the regular jobs like you go for in the Philippines, you know, <laughs> whether you work in a factory, you work maybe in SM mall, they want all these requirements, you know. So that means, how is the average poor person going to have all this money to be doing NBI, NBI clearance, barangay certificate, police clearance? Here, all right, some employers, they will do a background check on you, and they will, they will do it at their expense if they want to hire you. But in the Philippines, no. You have to pay for all this stuff. So it's very, very difficult, you see, to get a job there because the thing, the hurdles you have to go through to get a job over there. Also, age discrimination. You reach a certain age, 30 years old, it's harder. At the time I thought I was helping you, you were 31 years old. So that means you passed that 30 year threshold. Very hard, you didn't have any certificate, you didn't have anything like that, very hard. So I figure I was gonna help you because I wanna be able to pull you out of poverty, right? bring you into a middle into the middle class because the Philippines has lots of nice malls. <laughs> you know, I mean I've been there. And I see beautiful malls, all kinds of things they're selling. But what's good other than beautiful malls if the only time you can go in there is if it's very hot and you want to go in there to cool off and you can't buy anything in there. You know? That's not good. You want you want to be able to go in there and you be able, you want to be able to shop. You want to have like a debit card, buy the things that you need, you know, for your kids and so forth. And that's what I thats what I was trying to give you an opportunity for. So you can be able to do that. You know? And I had no idea that you were really doing yourself in. I mean, going to Bahrain to work as a maid, that's no joke. I, I got nothing against people working as a maid, but let me tell you. That is not an easy job. I told you, Lynn was working there, and I, you remember, in in um in Kuwait, and the lady didn't care, you know, whether she was in pain or what have you. And you have a small physique, so I just can't imagine you. So you know what? When you told me you worked in Bahrain for 
for um a year as domestic i f i stopped feeling sorry for myself because yeah i was feeling sorry for myself and say how stupid are you you know that you never even called the school which i could have i knew the school number i could have write the school which i could have you know i could have pick up the phone call them and say yeah you know, is there a girl there named joyce secunda is she in the food and beverage i need to talk to her is she in the class and they would have told me no there's no such person here you know and I could have saved myself a lot of misery, all this money, you know, for like going to Thailand, washing machine, and uh, um, all the loans and so forth, all the time, all that money, I would have just stopped, and I would say, you know what, you're just a scammer, I'm not even going to deal with you, you know, I, I would just, or just ask you to apologize or something like that, I could have put an end to it, but you know what, I really trusted you, and trust is something you, you don't really get that easily anymore, you know? And the reason some of these people are mad at you, people like Lynn and so forth, because some of, some of them go on sites, like, uh, you know, some of these websites, these romance sites, looking for a partner, looking to meet somebody. And what kind of reputation is that? <laughs> if they hear, like, oh my goodness, this guy was trying to help this person. He wasn't even in a romantic relationship with her. And he was trying to help her. Maybe, like, a guy's trying to help his sister, you know? And she took advantage and did all that stuff to him, you know? And uh, she told me, yeah, there's a, a friend of hers, some other lady, I think in Kuwait. And she saw me in the, in the pictures, you know? That I guess she posted. And she said, oh, you know, your friend, um, is your friend, like, single? Is he available? So forth. Because she said she'd been scammed. <laughs> and I had to laugh. I said she'd been scammed. She said, yeah, she'd been scammed by some men online that she meet. You know, she's trying to date, and she got fed up. So here's a woman from the Philippines who's complaining that she's been scammed by men, you know. And she's not the only one. There's some people who come on to chat with them. They say, yeah, they're American. They usually take somebody's real picture. They claim to be, you know, somebody in the military. They make up a story. And and they have, uh, <laughs> they have some, some of these women fall for it. They send them money, you know. One, one woman in particular told Lynn, when Lynn told her, you know, that's not real. That's a scammer. And she got <laughs> she got angry at her. She got angry at Lynn, and she told her, "No, you're just jealous that I have a good-looking boyfriend. You know, you're just jealous. That's why. That's what she told her, because the guy was asking her for money and so forth. And I said, listen, you know, tell your friends that if somebody is American, they're in the military or whatever you, or they're in America." Then they, they have to live in a country that many people try to get into, right? We have a problem with people sneaking in the country from the border, the southern border, America. You can come to America and you can find a job. As somebody, anybody know from the, from the Philippines, you know, like they said, TNT, you know, in, in Hayden, people in Hayden, people undocumented. We have a lot of that here. And, um, a person without a green card can come here and still get a job, you know? That's one thing about this country. This can still get a job. Just like uh, the nurse told me, the nurse who used to work with me from the Philippines, and she was like 70 years old, and she said to me one day, she said, Sammy, you know, look at me at my age. I could still come in here and work per diem. And she said, you know, if I was in my country, that would never happen in the Philippines. She told me, and she laughed. <laughs> and we both laughed. She and she said, "Isn't America a great country?" I said, "Yeah." When they have uh, labor and they need you, they don't care how old you are. They're gonna give you a job. You see. So these people who coming on and talking to women, you know, who working as domestic in Kuwait or what have you, they're scammers. That's what they are. And it's usually people in in Africa, you know, maybe Nigeria, Ghana, or so forth. And some of these women, they're looking for a partner because um, they're working in these countries. They have kids sometimes. And they're looking for a real-life partner, you see? And the problem is um, somebody like you come along and then, you know, somebody gives you an opportunity. 
and then you just blew it. You just like decide, oh, instead of taking the opportunity and go to school, I'm just going to keep asking for, for money, pretend I'm a ship, scam him and scam him and scam him, you know. <laughs> when you could have, you could have just took the damn course. The course is only, um, it was 30 days, five days a week, right? So five days a week out of a month, that's like, that's like 20, 20 days in September, <laughs> right? Because September has 30 days, remember? 30 days has September, April, June, and November. So September is one of those months that has 30 days in it. So you would have just had like 20 days to take the course. Finish your course, and then you go do internship in Thailand, and then they, they pay you. That's how it was. They pay you to work in a hotel, you know, either in Bangkok or I think Koh Samui, one of those islands in Thailand. So for the life of me, I can't understand why you threw all that away and end up working in, in Bahrain, you know? It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, I mean, you said I should come there and slap you around. But if I came there and slap you around, it won't be because I'm slapping you around for what you did to me. Because that was just money. You know, that was just money. But the whole idea is that you did this to yourself. And I'm really angry that you did this to yourself. That you deny yourself an opportunity. Because... You're going over every day in the Philippines, you know, and the Philippines is not an easy country. It doesn't have the kind of social network like America, you know, <laughs> where in America we have the social safety network like the welfare system, the food stamps, and so forth, that if you're going hungry, you know, you can apply for food stamps and you don't have to worry, you know, you can get food stamps. So even if you're homeless, they have a shelter system. You can go there. Or the government could put you out, at least in New York. They could, you know, I, I happen to live in one of the better states for social social services, you know. I don't know about other states like Virginia. They don't have that. But uh, like New York where I live, yeah, if you're homeless here, the government will put you up in a shelter. You know, they, they're not going to, anybody you see sleeping in the street in New York that's homeless is because they want to sleep there. They don't want to be in a shelter. But in the Philippines, I see people sleeping in the street in, when I was in Cebu City. You know, that's common. You know, you have homeless people, abject poverty, and we all grow older if we're lucky to become older. And I see, I see videos of old people in the Philippines. You know that people go around and try to help. Seventy years old, frail, doesn't have enough money for med medicine and so forth. Um, doesn't have enough money for food. Doesn't doesn't even have kids around. You know, just living alone. You know. And I was I was looking toward the future. I was looking toward the future. You know? So that means look, if if we do something good in our lives, you know, it will come back to them. Right? If we do something good. And I think I told you when I was a boy, you know, we had a school play and for some reason they had me play the role of Jesus Christ. And one thing I had to say was that people trying to enter heaven um, some of them were turned back. And I had to say, if you do good, you do good for yourself. And if you do bad, you do bad for yourself. See, so when you do good for somebody, it's like, it's like karma. It comes back to you, you see. It's not only when you do bad things that come back to you, you know. So when you do good things, it comes back to you. So if I do good to help you, goodness call falls back on me too. If I do bad against you, badness falls back on me. You see? So I was trying I was trying to make I was trying to give you a better life. I was trying to give you the opportunity, the tools. So you could you could improve your life for you, for your kids and so forth. And going to going to uh, Bahrain in the Middle East to work, you know that is, that is not the way to do it. Because that's like slavery. That's like modern day slavery. Working 16 hours a day. You know. If you <laughs> if you work in food and beverage. You're going to have a shift. And that's it. You, you're going to be finished. Whether you work in a, in a hotel. In uh, Manila. Or one of those places. And the Philippines has a lot of hotels. You know. They got a lot of hospitality industry. Because. Um, 
you know, they got lots of islands, lots of places, lots of resorts. So there are always different, you know, jobs in those different fields. And if you don't want to work in the Philippines, you go out, you know. And working in a ship is one of those. Uh, you, you see, like that article I sent you the other day. They say some of the people who work, some of the Filipinos who work in ships, they do very well, you know. They can build a nice house for their family. They can send their kids to college, which is true. They like some, in, in the terms of the Philippines, they're like rich, you know, using that word, rich. They're like rich because they make more money. They get paid maybe 10 times more, probably, than what some Filipinos will earn doing the same job. So they can build a house faster. They can have a car. They can, they can send their kids to college. And if you send your kids to college, you get an advantage. That means they have a better life, you know, better job. You, you, you take them out of poverty. You increase their chances to live longer because if you can live, if you can live longer, you know, if you have a, a better job, you can earn more money. You eat better food, you know, than eating garbage food. You can't be eating rice all the time. Sometimes you used to tell me, look, if I send you some money, you say, oh, I went out and buy rice. That's no way to live. I mean, come on, <laughs> you know? I mean, whereby the first thing you think of is, let me eat rice. No, you know, like it says in the Bible, man does not live by bread alone, right? That's what Jesus Christ said. Man does not live by bread alone. That's a powerful comment. There's more to life than just eating food, you see? There are other things, like going out, doing things, and so forth, you see? So... I'm I'm sorry that that it's like this, but um, you know that Angel Angelica never existed. That was all you know. That was all a sham. Your mother it wasn't her. So you were like three in one, you know, like in like in the Bible, the Holy Trinity. <laughs> Even though this wasn't holy, you know, the Father, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, like you say in the Catholic Church, right? The Holy Trinity. So you were you, Joyce, your mother, Angelica, you know, it's really amazing. Yeah. But uh but anyway, I just wanted to I just wanted to ask you these questions and get and get this off my my chest, okay? Because in the end in the end, Joyce, you did yourself in. You know? You did you yeah, you did yourself in because the money I gave you ain't going to make me poor, you know, or poorer or what have you. I could always work and make that back. Yeah, I lost your trust. I really I really believed in you. That I can never get back because trust is something, you know. Money you can always get back, but trust that you, you lost, no. You never get trust back. And all this kind of stuff that you're doing, you're just going to make people angry you know any woman hearing about you they're gonna be pissed off because some of them look for a better life they want you know they want to meet somebody who's a foreigner they could make a better life for themselves more maybe move out of the Philippines to a country where they don't have to deal with a lot of nonsense a lot of corruption and stuff like that and living, living in the Philippines as you know it's not easy there's always like uh, storms typhoons you know, I mean, it's one thing being poor, but then you have to put up with with uh, typhoons, bad weather, uh, how homes being destroyed, you know, destroyed because of bad weather. I was looking at the video last night, the man played water, so much water, you know, because of typhoons. So, it, you, you, you have, it's very challenging to live in the Philippines, you know, the things you have to deal with. Just to get a job, the the hoops you got to to jump through to get a job, you know. And then they even made it bad that um, employers can now hire people like some of them like for six months and then lay you off, you know. So they won't have to pay any like social security, healthcare benefits. So they can do that. When when we were at uh, SM Mall of Asia. There was a young girl there, maybe in her early 20s, she came up to us and she told us about, uh, she represents this place where, you know, they sell like uh, apartments, I think for like 30,000 US dollars. But she was speaking to Lynn and then she spoke to me 
And I don't know why Lynn let her on because I got kind of angry. It's like, why you gave her your phone number? You know, you know, you don't have the money to buy the house. And she, she, the girl, I mean, okay, the point is that here's this young girl, you know, she probably is a college graduate and she's in SM Mall of Age and she's walking around looking for people to see if she can sell property to, you know, and uh, she's a representative. Maybe she got a commission or something. And that's really hard because she figured, yeah, she sees Lynn, she sees me, I'm a foreigner. Maybe, you know, she figured, oh, you know, maybe you can buy. And she even wanted to take us. She she told me, yeah, you know, we I can take you to the place and show you the, show you the apartment, you know. And the reason I'm telling you this story is because here's this young girl who seems to be well-dressed, educated, probably spent four years in college. And this is the job she's doing, you know. And she's trying to make a living that way. And that's a hard way to make a living. Because how many people are you going to run into in SM, SM Mall of Asia who wants to buy an apartment, you know, in that area in the Philippines? <laughs> and even I said to her, I said, you know what? Those kind of places, um, um, I don't really, to me, they're like sterile, you know. You, you live around certain people, uh, people with certain standards, you know, because when we went to Bonifacio, Bonifacio is like that. If they were to, if they were to blindfold you and drop you into Bonifacio in the dead of night, you would never believe you in the Philippines. If somebody tell you, wake up now, take the blindfold off, and you, and they say, oh, you're in the Philippines, you say, no, that can't be, because it looks nothing like the Philippines. The streets are well designed. The traffic lights are designed. I mean, if you cross the street, you got the the light to cross. Nobody's turning turning to hit you, you know, like in Manila, that kind of stuff. Everything is so right there. People walking with their big dogs and so forth. You know, they have their big dogs. They're walking with and so forth. Everything is fine. They even have little parks out there to play basketball and so forth. Everything is just great, you see. So those, and they have lots and lots of apartments there, I'm sure, you see. But you have to have the kind of money to live there. Whereas if you go to the other side of uh, Manila, you see you see how people live. A lot of people live. You know, people live uh, day to day, poverty. People trying to sell things on the street to survive. It's not easy. You see, so you 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 end up you end up hurting yourself, and I don't know why you did it. I know I know you said well, um, you know, you you said that you 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 did it because you need you needed to buy uh, things or what have you, but still, <laughs> I mean, really, you know that that's not that's no reason, you know. That you need to help your family. The best way to help your family is to have like a good education. Yeah, to have a good education, to get a job. Yeah, and uh, you can earn well. But going to going to the Middle East, come on, that's hard work. Working 16 hours a day, and then they have uh, this. You know, the hours have this. This holiday called Ramadan, and Ramadan is is not like <laughs> like how Easter is here, you know, with us. Like Easter is like a few days, right? We have the Lent season, but in the Lent season, we don't really go like doing a lot of stuff like them. You know, it's just Lent. That's it. You go from uh, you begin Lent, and then you go all the way into Easter. But with Ramadan, with them in the Middle East, it's kind of crazy because they have money and all kinds of stuff. So, you have to, like, get up in the middle of the night to prepare them food because they're in a fast during the day. They don't eat. And then maybe 2, 3 in the morning, they want to eat. So, who's going to have to feed them? You know, you, the domestic worker, got to get up, uh, ruin your sleep, and so forth. I know, because I heard all the story, you know. So, and, and this is Ramadan, and Ramadan goes on and on, you know, for what seems like forever. So it's like maybe a whole month or more, right? Then they have Eid, Eid, the holiday Eid and so forth. All these different holidays. 
And then, you you know, you risk all that kind of thing. You risk being abused. You risk being raped. Um, you know, one Filipino ended up di dead in a freezer in Kuwait. Some people killed her. Family didn't hear from her in a long time. You know, all kinds of crazy stuff happened. Yeah. All kinds of crazy stuff happened. But to me, I was, you know, they use that term like a guardian angel. Well, I was like your guardian angel. I was looking out for you. I was looking out for you to make sure that nothing bad happened to you. But you were not looking out for yourself. You know? You were, you were not looking out for yourself. You see? I was, I was trying to make sure that you don't have a problem that you can um <coughs> you can you can go out there you can enjoy life you can live well and so forth you know that was the whole idea but i don't know so uh, so i want i want to know you know i want to know from you you do you have any problems against working you you hate working or what because it seemed like you, you didn't mind, you know, getting a job, like in the quality control. Is it, is it you don't like to work? Is that what it is? Yeah. Huh? You don't like to work, right? Sorry. Is it that you don't, you don't like working? You don't think work is for you you know you just try to make money the easy way maybe scamming and that's it and you don't care to work is that what it is because i don't know i mean every i i don't know is is it you, you, you is it you don't you don't like working you don't you know is is that what it is of course i do you like working right yes yeah, because you went to the Middle East, so of course, <laughs> you know, if if you didn't like working, chances are you'd just stay in the Philippines and say, I'll just stay here and be poor, that's all. And and, and you took the risk going to Philip you you took the risk going to the Middle East, which is not which is not easy. So this this is what this is what I don't understand, you know. Even if you say, Yeah, I needed I needed the money, uh I need I needed the money. Yeah, you need the money, but still, you know, it's like it's like why it's like why 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 you why you had to do that? Why can't you just take the damn course? You know, why can't you just take the course and say, you know what? Let me just take this course. You know, this guy gave this to me for free. He's not asking me for anything. You know, but you didn't. So I figure I said maybe she didn't like, maybe she doesn't like working, but then I remember you know you were working in the factory, and and you had to you had to rent bed space and all that you know you had to be away from your kids and then your kid got hit by a tricycle and you had to run home and so forth. I don't know. I don't know. You know I mean you did all this and then you become the victim. You know, you, usually uh, people who want to scam, they uh, they hurt the other person because they figure they get over. But in your case, you just you you just hurt yourself, and I don't know why you did that to yourself. No. Yeah. But listen. You, you, you answered my questions, and I really needed to clear, clear up some things like Angelica and so forth, you know? Because I'm hearing that Angelica is not really Angelica and, you know, the girl in the picture and so forth, you know? So I was fed a lot of things, you know, really a lot of lies and so forth, you know? Thinking that's Angelica, not knowing that's not the case, you know? And telling me she wants to be a lawyer and so forth. Which to me is good, you know, but uh, I don't know. Yeah. All right. I guess we got. Uh...
send it from our app. A fast cash.